Okay. Uh, the time is now 7.02 and seen as a quorum of committee members is in attendance, this public meeting is being called to order. Welcome everybody to the September 21st, 2022 public meeting of the Amherst Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by the state legislature on July 16th of 2022, this meeting is being conducted virtually using the Zoom platform. The meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. And if we could just go around and everybody could um, introduce themselves as a roll call, we um, can then get started. And so I'm Becky Michaels and I'm here. Hi, I'm Lucas Hanscom. Matt Larson here. And I saw your lips move, but nothing came out, but we register that you're here. Rika Clement. Um, so the first item on the agenda, and Ben, obviously you're here. I don't, are you, you're- Not a member. Not a member, right, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so the agenda tonight really primarily is to look over the, um, and to finalize the RFP so we can um, get started doing that. Um, I know everybody had an opportunity to read it and then send their comments into Ben. Um, and then he sent out a version that I think incorporated comments, but if you didn't see yours in there, then now's the time to, to raise it. And then I'll also um, take the opportunity just to highlight some changes or suggestions that I've made that Ben put in, but that obviously everything is open for discussion. Um, so Ben, do you wanna put it up? Is that the easiest way? Do, would that be helpful to people if we sort of just went through a little bit and, and kind of talked about? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to share. Would it be easier? I could share the version that has like the track changes in it. And then I basically just accepted okay. all those changes. Right. So um, the only thing that I actually realized, because um, just so all of you know, one of the things that I did, I had a bunch of changes that were just sort of more grammar things. So I actually sent a track changes version to Ben in which I incorporated Rika and Suzanne's comments that had come to the group. Um, and so my guess is that he then incorporated whatever Nat, Lucas and Greg recommended um, into that, so yeah. that's what we would be looking at. Um, and I realized the one thing I think somebody might have recommended bulleting the initial community priorities, which I think I didn't. I forgot to make that change, mm. but I do think that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea as well. Um, all right, oh, let's see this social service RSD. Okay. Um, all right, so assuming this is visible for everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, some of you just pointed out like just some redundancies and, and you know, things were, you know, said twice. And um, so, um, let's right. see. So I think a couple people had comments about the who to, who to contact mm -hmm. on staff. Um, and so is there a, is it you? Yeah, wait, I feel like is there other stuff? I feel like there's other stuff I accepted that wasn't. Um, yeah. So this is the social service. Just bear with me for a second. Um, yeah, all right. Sorry. there. I must have accepted the changes and then made, made other changes. Sorry. All right. Hopefully this doesn't get too messy. So I did. Yeah, I put my contact information in the final version. Um, it's just not not showing up here. So I, I encourage folks to reach out to me. Um, and then I, I deleted it here and then put put just uh, stated it clearly here that they're encouraged to contact town staff um, with my and then added my email address. Um, yeah, I think these could better be um, bulleted out bullet points because they're also shown. Where are they shown? Um, they're at the end, I think. Uh, on the cover sheet here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right or in the beginning, right. You know, on the contacting the town staff, I guess my question was, do you want, I mean, you're encouraging all applicants, right? Not just new applicants. Yeah, I think, I think um, there's always issues that come up or questions about, you know, is this eligible or is this not eligible or things like that. So, um, okay. If someone doesn't have a reason to contact me, then they won't. But typically, you know, it's 
you know, it's, it's, it's helpful. Yeah. Just to talk okay. things over. So yep. I'm going to leave that in there. Um, One of the things that I tried to do in, in some of the comments that I made was um, to make it clear that the rules that were here weren't our rules, but were required by Mm -hmm. So, for example, at the bottom where it says DHCD, we had will fund no more. They require that we not, right? So, anyway, yeah, yeah, that was just one. So, if, if people see other areas that I may have missed um, in making that, um, I just think it's it's important to understand who's setting which kinds of rules. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. What we have an ability to change and what we don't. You know, under if you go up a little bit, um, the second to bottom paragraph on that, the second sentence, CBD, CDBG funds and also must, it feels like there's a bit of a typo there. Second to last paragraph, so. And the second yeah, and the second sentence in it, starting with CDBG oh, yeah. funds. Yeah. Or must also be also. Used, it looks like something that. Yeah, I feel like the end needs to come out. Yeah, there you go. But actually, even that sentence doesn't make sense now because they can only be used for a program that demonstrates a community need or. Yeah, yeah so maybe. CBD like, yeah. fund applicants also must, maybe. Yeah, so take out the end, I think. Take out yeah. the end and add applicant. Yeah. That's no, CBD applicants. So yeah, or you could say you must meet a community fund, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right, oh, that's good. Must meet. Does that work? Sorry, I'm just trying to do this on the fly or a continuation yeah. of a project. But actually, is that going to screw you up then because we're not looking at the final? Um, well, it's in red here, so I can okay, so you'll know the okay. see the final changes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. And then similar here, it's, you know, DHCD requirement. Do, do, do. Um, yeah. Email address. So, yeah, the 18 month budget is important. Um, we have the tax collision, da, 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 new cover sheet. So yeah, I appreciate um, whoever kind of like bulleted so, this. So ben, oh, yeah. Um, so just going back there under proposal items, um, the numbers there um, before that, I think it's on page three. Mm, okay. Just to be consistent with the changes that were made, it looks like the, um, the lettering had gone from A to H, now it goes from A to I. So just for consistency, okay. uh, two answers to questions A through I, I believe. Oh, that's really helpful. Thank you. So yeah, I'm just going to scroll down to see what are the, so A. Yeah, go, uh, no, it goes to H maybe? Or is there an I? So in, in what you sent out, the final you sent out has I. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, the, the project impact was I. Right? Weird, all right, yeah, because national objective description should be A. Okay. Should we just look at the final version? Would that be easier for everybody or do you want to see track changes? I'm fine what. with the final version. Okay. I, I don't yeah. feel like I need to see the okay. changes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, mean, the, I didn't make much substantive. It was more like reorganizing things. And then the one substantive, yeah. I, I know what it is. So yeah, let me just double check up here. It's A through. Yeah. All right. So thanks for pointing. That should be A through I. Wouldn't want there to be any confusion. Like, oh, I don't have to answer. Right. Um, <laughs> right. <clears throat> All right, so we're doing the 18 month budget, uh, Friday, November 4th. Um, 
So again, these are the, you know, specific activities and priorities we're listing out. You know, there can always be an other category. Um, you know, I think this does a pretty good job of, you know, capturing most of the types of projects that would come through while also, you know, having enough difference between them that that's not that can shouldn't be that confusing. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel comfortable with with leaving this as is and again having that other category captures any anything else that could come through. Um, yeah, I agree. So I think a lot of this was just formatting. Yep. Um, and you know clearing up any redundancies between the different categories you know yeah having an organizational chart in this one um the budget information you know, let me just make a note this i don't know why that font is weird <laughs> um project need yeah, so going uh, just up above there too, uh, the answers for parts D through H, I guess now should be parts E through I. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Great, and then um, I think if at least two of you, you know, uh, talked about um, adding something about racial equity and, and climate goals into the actually you know, meat of the substance of the application that's being submitted. Um, so incorporating that into uh, project impact here. So this is you know, what they, they would be required or encouraged to, to write about um, in their application. So I, uh, adding in this language here, how does the project impact the town's priority of addressing systematic racial racial injustice? Um, I think it will be important uh, component to add, you know, it's something we've heard from the community and from you all as, as committee members. Um, so I think that's one of the more substantive changes that, you know, is actually new language as opposed to kind of just reordering things. Um, mm -hmm. And is everybody good with that language? I know, um, I think that's a version, some version or might even be what I had provided. Yeah. Um, and I think it came from something that I read as a town priority, but if that doesn't sound right to anybody or you have other ways of phrasing it. Oops. Oh, Greg. Sorry, Greg's in the attendees. Let me promote him to panelist. I think that I think that language is good. Okay. Hi, Greg. Welcome. Hi. How are you doing tonight? Good. So we're just going through the social service application right now, or RFP. Um, yeah, I, I've seen it. Uh, yeah. I've been on a little while, but oh, in the good, wrong okay. place. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, so we were just noting the one, I think, substantive addition we made was this bullet six. How does this project impact the town's priority of addressing systemic racial injustice? I think most of the other changes we made were more sort of rearranging things. And so we're just talking about that language, whether everybody agrees that that line or something addressing that should be in there. Um, and if anybody has any other thoughts about it, or if we should just, if it's good and move along. Hearing nothing. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. Fine with me. Great. All right. Um, so yeah, it's standard project impact, and then you kind of move into how the a description of how the proposal will be reviewed, um, explaining that there's kind of this back and forth with questions um, and then a public meeting making to make the recommendations to the town manager. <clears throat> and so another thing I-, I So uh, another thing here under quality requirements, there, there had been that line that said that an agency had to have been 
in a yeah, like for five, five years or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I talked to Nate about that. Um, he said it was somewhat arbitrary. It wasn't like a DHCD okay. requirement. I think a, a, a previous iteration of the block grant committee um, decided to add that. Um, not as like, you know, it's interesting because it's it says requirement here, but the way Nate described it, it was not a requirement. It was like a, you know, a, something that, would receive positive points and you know as you know there, there could you know it, was, uh, it wasn't necessarily like they had to be in existence for five years but when I talked to him about it he said it was fine to to remove it and it you know kind of paves the way for newer organizations to feel comfortable applying um well it's interesting because last year we we absolutely considered the mobile market I know yeah funding and never even thought about whether I mean the fact that it was new so um yeah I mean, from my perspective, I don't think that we should have a requirement about age. I don't know if other people or longevity of the however long the organization's been around. Do other people feel differently? No, I think it's fine. I think with I think, that is oh sorry, go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was just gonna say if if there is an organization that's new and so we have um concerns about them, then we can mark them down on the evaluation. But to just say that you know you're required to have a certain number of years um does seem a little bit unfair, arbitrary. I just given the unique nature of where we're at right now, and I don't know if you can all hear me okay, um, of what's been, you know, going on with the pandemic, there could be things that are new or even temporary that um, may be around for only the next three to five years. Yeah, I think we should measure them on the other qualities rather than exactly how old or young they are. Another minor conforming change there, the project proposal comparative evaluation criteria refers to questions A through H. So I guess that's A through I. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just do like a control, like F, like yeah. search for, for any A through H thing, yeah. All right. Um, and so, yeah, basically, you know, these correspond to each of the above, um, you know, categories. Uh, and so it's kind of how each one will be evaluated. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I guess many of you went through this process last year, so you can maybe recall um, if there were, if you remember there may, may have been any issues or kind of inconsistencies or things that weren't clear. Um, I don't remember hearing too much about the process itself. It seems to work pretty well. Um, these are the... Yeah, I don't, I think it worked really well. And I thought the, the length of the applications was great. Um, mm -hmm. And it was helpful to have I mean, to sort of know what you were looking for in each one because they each really just stayed true to what we were yeah. looking for that information. Yeah. There's two C's under contractual requirements. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's one of those Microsoft Word things. All right. <laughs> Um, great, yeah, and then it's just the legal requirements, the updated income guidelines, and yeah, that's that. So, great. Is everybody? Do we need to vote on this, or we can just all feel good that it's fine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as everyone's feeling good. I think if there's any like major, yeah. you know, changes that were being made, we could vote on it. Objections now. <laughs> Great. Thanks for all that work on that, Ben. Yeah, no, thank you all for everybody's comments into one document. I had to do that before and it can be tricky, but you did great. Yeah. Um, great. Yeah, I mean the the same comments were basically made for the non-social service RFP. Um, so you know, I think those obviously made the same changes. Um 
for this one, um, <clears throat> there's some question about the target areas and, and including those still in the in the list of priorities. Um, for the non-social service priorities, it's it is, I guess, required that they are um, if it's like a physical infrastructure type project or like a housing rehabilitation project, they do need to be located in the target areas. But I will say, you know, it's not a perfect process. It's kind of like this chicken or egg thing because, um, you know, it's only a handful of agencies that apply for the infrastructure funds. It's really the town, the housing authority, you know, maybe like a, you know, Valley CDC or Wayfinders doing a housing project. Um, and we typically know, you know, if who and, you know, what the projects are going to be coming in as and if if there's, you know, we we can always change the target areas if there's to match the projects that are coming in, if we feel like it's appropriate. Um, can so I it's a question about yeah. that because I, I thought that we had said that at the last one. So then when I saw that we had the target areas on here. One concern I had is that if there was somebody who had applied within these target areas that we identified, but then we preferred a project that wasn't in those target areas and selected that instead, that seems unfair. Mm -hmm. um, so can we say, I mean, is, is it, does it have, do we have to really specify which target areas we're having or can we be a little looser with the language? Mm. Um, Yeah, I mean, um, let's see, by, by focusing efforts on target areas. In terms of... Can we say including? I guess one question I would have is if they are in one of the target areas, is that, um, I don't know, sort of a point in their favor, I mean, or, or not? Well, the state, the DHCD would, wouldn't let us consider um, or wouldn't, wouldn't uh, fund a project that's not in a target area. I see. So in other words, if one comes in, we're going to say, oh, it is a target area if it's not already been identified. Yeah, exactly. I see. Okay. Okay. So but if but if, but if anything areas. can be a target area, then why do we mention it at all? No, I mean that that's kind of the 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 and not everything can be yeah. a target area, right? I mean there are some areas yeah, yeah, like Amherst Never Woods or something couldn't be a target area, area but it, it would have to be, um, it's based on the census tracks and, you know, finding, um, you know, areas where there's multiple census, census tracks together with majority, low, moderate income. Um, Could we say something like by focusing efforts on areas that have been identified as target areas, including, and then that gives us a little bit of room to expand to different target areas. Right, yeah, or, like, or meet the qualifications of a yeah. target area or something, yeah, yeah. yeah. I um, wonder if we should also maybe indicate what what makes a target, what makes an area eligible to be a target area. Mm -hmm. It's not us just deciding that there's Yeah. Ideas. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So loosen up language. Um, define what makes a target area. Um, yeah, I like how you said that that meets the specifications of a target area, which are da da da, da and yeah, include and maybe list the, the areas. Yeah. Okay. That's something like that. Um. Yeah, I agree. Because I mean, we heard that comment from uh, Hilda yes. last last week or last meeting right. with Amherst, and right. you know, I think if anything were to be added, it, you know, I feel like North Amherst could be considered. Um, I would have to double check the census areas and stuff, but you know, for example, like I don't think there's an Amherst Housing Authority um, property in North Amherst. I could be wrong, but like I think in previous block grant committees like chose those target areas to try to capture housing authority properties and you know places that are need, in need of you know infra new infrastructure and that kind of stuff but um you know if i i think we'll we should have a better sense of you know what projects are being proposed as we get closer to the um deadline so i think it's you know makes sense to 
just loosen it up a little bit. And, you know, we, I, I, I guess the worst case scenario is like a out of left field, like a, you know, affordable housing developer that we've never heard of is like, oh, I wanted a project in North Amherst, but I guess I can't apply. So, you know, and then just, you know, forget it doesn't contact me or something like that. So I think it's, yeah, it's good to keep it a little loose just so we're not, you know, completely, um, you know, turning anyone away or, or giving that sense. So, um, I see a hand raised. We, we were going to do public comment um, at the end, but um, it's Lev. Would you like to? Yeah, why don't Take we comment now? Okay. Do I need to open it officially to public comment to do that, or can we just invite her in? Um, yeah, we can invite That's her in. And um, and then if there's further comments, we can do additional public comment at the end. So Great. I love, we should be able to talk now. Hi. I apologize. I'm not trying to talk out of turn. I just wanted to, nor am I making an official public comment. I just wanted to mention that Olympia Oaks, which is uh, run, I believe, by Wayfinders, I think that would qualify as North Amherst. It's like Stone's Throw from UMass. You were just yeah. housing developments in North yeah. Amherst. So, um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Wasn't trying to interrupt your proceedings. I just wanted to interrupt. Thanks. Of, yeah. Is that is an affordable housing development um, that is in North Amherst. Great. That's all. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, we appreciate it. It's good. Thank you. Yeah, and if, not, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was a block grant project at Olympia Oaks, um, or maybe it was a housing choice grant. I forget, but there was a a, a sidewalk that was built um, from outside of Olympia Oaks so to 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 provide access to the bus stop that's right there, kind of up on East Pleasant Street. I think that might've been block grant, but yeah, maybe the, it had been a target area previously or something like that or, but no, th thanks for that comment, Lev. I think, um, yeah, that probably what should be something we consider as kind of those different housing developments. Um, so, yeah, I think- And otherwise, one other- Yeah, oh, go for it. Okay, um, where you have encouraged to contact town staff dash Ben Breger, maybe you want to say what your like title is or position. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Just to clarify who they're. Yeah, so they know talking who they're to. Yeah. Talking to. yeah. Although in reality, everyone knows who Ben is, really. Well, true. His <laughs> reputation does precede. <laughs> when I was in high school in Amherst, I played. I was on the football team, and it used to be like the highlight of anything when I could like get my name in the paper, just to be like <laughs> Ben Breger had like two tackles or something like that. And now working for the town, I'm like, oh god, I do not want to see my name in the paper, <laughs> like. <laughs> That's great. Um, all right. Yeah, so I think, yeah, again, otherwise, um, it was just kind of the same changes. I don't know. I'm going to look and see why there's these phantom lines that show up. Um, actually, let me go back here. So for the type of activity, yeah, just so you all know, these are these are like the DHCD, you know, standard you know, type of non-social service projects. So um, those don't really change, can't really change. Um, and then, yeah, I added the, I'll go through and make sure all the, you know, lettering makes sense for this one. Added the lang language about does the project impact town's priorities of addressing systematic, systemic racial injustice. And yeah, otherwise it's the same. So yeah, thank you. Thank you all for um, timely and really good feedback on the RFP. I think, you know, the 10, 15 years this program has been running, I'm sure the RFP improves a little, a little bit incrementally every year. So 
That was helpful. Um, and actually, no, Ben, I'm sorry, I don't have the ag agenda. Let me pull up. I think the only other thing on the agenda is public comment, right? Um, sorry, I have it right here. What else did I say? So just wanted to just, again, go over the timeline quickly. Oh, right. um, and I have that up on a Word document, I think. Let's see. Um, here it is. Yeah. So let me just zoom in a little bit. So we already did this one. Um, so yeah, we're uh, gearing up to release the RFP on the 30th, which is not this Friday, but the following Friday. Um, applicants would then have, you know, over a month to respond uh, due November 4th. Um, I would then, I'm happy to hand deliver hard copies to folks if they'd like them. Um, give you the opportunity to ask questions and then give applicants the opportunity to respond to those questions. Um, this is good timing because then DHCD requires us to have a list of activities um, in this sometime in December, I'm not sure. So um, by this point, we will have a sense of all the potential proposals. Um, we might, might not have narrowed, we wouldn't have narrowed them down quite yet or, or made our recommendation but DHCD can then give us feedback of something, you know, clearly not eligible or, you know, what they might think of it. Um, so then, you know, you will have basically from December 9th, you know, through the Christmas holiday and New Year's um, to then submit your evaluations um, for each activity. And one, one question on the, um timing there if if um is that november 18 is that when you will um provide those questions to the applicants or is that when we provide the questions to you and so you will then take a, you know, a few days to compile those and get them out or what what is that november 18 yeah no so that's i'm looking now that's a friday um so yeah i think you know maybe on the 21st or something of November, I would, on that Monday, maybe I would have, I would then send out the, the questions. I mean, depending, maybe so I can, get maybe. To you by November 18th. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it, it, it might not be that hard to compile it. Maybe I'll say you all send it to me by noon and then, and then I have the afternoon to compile it all um and send it out to the committee members i mean hopefully i assume it'll just either be an email or a word doc and i can just you know basically for each activity send them you know everyone's questions um hopefully i can i think i should be able to do that in an afternoon do you think that we could have it be um if it's going to, if we did it by noon have it the monday I, I don't know about everybody else but i tend to do my cdbg work over the weekend Mm. Um, and maybe we'd get to it the weekend before, but if we could get it to you by the like the twenty first at noon, or does that feel like it's too close to? Well, it's during the Thanksgiving week, I guess. So that's uh, just leave it. It's fine. I'll do it the weekend before. Mm -hmm. And that we're getting the applications. What like the seventh, right? They're gonna they're due. I due to the committee. What 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 does that mean? It's coming. Isn't going it, to you first? It comes to me first, yeah. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, realistically, I would probably email them out on the on the seventh. Okay, so we have the seventh until the eighteenth, yeah, essentially. Okay. And then when we so we submit our evaluations on the fifth, and then do you? I can't remember. Do you send those? to us before the meeting on the 12th so we have a sense of the rankings? Um, I can't remember if we saw it for the first time at the meeting or if we got it before. I think my recollection again is, um, you know, I think Nate ran it last time. I, I think he sent it out beforehand just um, to preview it all. And it basically just be the, it's the Excel sheet that has the, 
you know, ranking for each for each one and then the, the aggregate. Um, and so let's see, January 5th is a Thursday. Thursday. Okay, that's good. And then we meet the following we so we meet a week later. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Right. So we have almost a month to review and come up with our mm -hmm. image once we get the questions back. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, if 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 there does need to be any wiggle room, I mean, I, I wanted to give myself February to kind of be it, it takes a while to kind of package everything up because I actually have to like um, you know, basically take sections of people's ap applicants proposals and you know ma mash it up to the the DHCD has a very specific format so it takes a little while um, but if we did, did need to push anything up you know we could lead into early February a bit but I think how I have it now is well timed um, but you know for example if we did need another meeting or something after the 19th we could always I think we could do that so and just for new people, those meetings, the 12th and the 19th, especially the 12th, tended to be a long meeting. Yeah. Just for your schedules. Mm -hmm. Just for your schedule so you have that in mind. All right, this looks great. Does anybody have any questions about it? Okay. Looks great. Great. Awesome. Um, then I think our next order of business is public comment. And I know Lev is still in with us as a panelist, but I think we also, I think Sarah Sargent's here. I don't know if she has a comment or she's listening. But if no hand is raised, then I think that covers all of our agenda items. Great. All right, um, does anyone want to move to close the meeting or does anyone have any final words before? Okay. I move to close the meeting. Okay, great. Second? Great, all right. Thanks everyone. Thank Very you. Good. Appreciate it. I'll be in touch. I'll let you good know job. when, when everything's released. We, just set a, we set a new land speed record for this meeting. Yeah, really. I know. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Yeah. I guess we're figuring out what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.